My name is Michael Baer. I was diagnosed with ALS in February of 2013. I have the sporadic variety, not the familial variety of ALS. Uh, early on in my diagnosis, I noticed that there was a change in my breathing. I didn't realize it was connected with, <clears throat> with my diaphragm, but I was having a lot of labored breathing. <sighs> and subsequently, I became associated, acquainted with someone who worked with me on massage techniques that helped me improve my breathing. So what I'd like to do today is introduce you to these massage techniques. And in the event that you have ALS, hopefully they can help you breathe uh, much easier. Hi, my name is Mark DeWitt. I'm a certified massage therapist with the state of California. And I'm here today to talk to you about uh, working with your loved one or your client on um, releasing their breathing through massage. So the first thing you want to consider uh, when you're getting ready to work with your loved one is the height of the table for you and then also bolstering your um, client or loved one so that they're comfortable when they're actually receiving the massage. For Michael, um, he is not comfortable being completely on his back. That causes some distress in his breathing. So we found that when we bolster him with a few pillows and, and a bolster, um, that it's actually more comfortable and he's able to get more benefit from the work that we're doing. So in terms of the height of the table, you want to make sure that you adjust the legs on the side. There's little knobs that you can unscrew, adjust the height of the table. And you want the table to be at a height where you're standing, that your knuckles barely graze the top of the table. That's going to make you comfortable in your position. And then setting up the bolster and pillows for your um, loved one. Just make sure that you're in communication with them, get it to a position where they feel they can lay back comfortably and that there's no distress in their breathing while they're doing so. And then you'll just want to take a blanket or a sheet afterwards and cover the bolster setup so that you're not getting any oil on your nice pillows or bolster. In a lot of ALS clinics, you'll hear a lot of discussion around the diaphragm in regards to breathing. Um, and while the diaphragm is important for breathing, you also have other muscles that are responsible for your breathing too, including your intercostal muscles, the small muscles between your ribs, as well as your scalenes, which are small muscles at the neck that help to elevate the first rib, which um, contributes to breathing as well. So our interest here um, today is in releasing the intercostals and talking about the scalenes. Now breathing, we have a kind of a misconstrued understanding of what breathing is, most of us do. What actually happens, if you can imagine your lungs almost like a paper sack or actually like a plastic sack, and it's connected on the outside to the diaphragm through connective tissue and to your intercostals through connective tissue. What ends up happening is when the muscle of the diaphragm engages and pulls down and the muscles between your ribs engage and pull the ribs out and up, more volume is created so that that plastic bag actually begins to expand outward and that allows almost like a vacuum air to rush into the lungs. So if there's tightness in the muscles around the chest, around the neck, the intercostal muscles, then we need to look at actually releasing those muscles so that there's more freedom for expansion and contraction of the rib cage. In summary, um, breathing is controlled by your diaphragm, the muscles between your ribs, and then some muscles around your neck also help in your breathing. So with ALS clients, a lot of times, um, and Michael experiences this, some tightness in the muscles around the neck, some tightness in the muscles around the chest and rib cage. So by actually releasing those muscles, it gives us more space for him to have full range of breath and breathe more effortlessly. We'll start with a few techniques that you can use with your loved one to help improve their breathing. The first of which is called effleurage. And effleurage is just kind of a, a very superficial stroke that um, you can do across the front of the chest and shoulders and neck. I'll talk about it a little bit as I'm doing this. Um, I'm using oil. Um, some people prefer to use lotion, but the Anything that has the least amount of chemicals, I'm all about that. So if you can use oils, that's even better. 
And the technique here is just getting full hand contact with the body. You'll notice I'm kind of starting here at the chest and then doing a stroke across to the shoulders, up the back of the shoulders towards the neck. And this basically, this stroke is about warming up the tissue so that when we get ready to do some deeper work, he's ready for that and we're not just racing right into more um, difficult techniques. And you can play with this. There's no right or wrong on this. You can come to the shoulders and do little circles at the shoulders. All sorts of good work to be done there. Just kind of warming up the tissue, as I mentioned. You can also do this from the side at the center of the chest and take it from right at the sternum, which is the center of your chest, right up towards the shoulder. You can do that both hands. You can kind of alternate one hand and the other. The biggest thing is just get hand contact with your loved one. They're going to love it. Just one stroke at a time. And take your time with it. Really feel the um, tissue, the skin underneath your hand. And your general idea is that you're just trying to open, like if you think of the chest metal, muscle running from here to here, you're just trying to lengthen that chest muscle and open some space around the chest. So effleurage is your first action. I'll do that again on the other side so you can see it. From center of chest, cross. You just notice I'm kind of shifting my body side to side here too. If you want to get technical, I'm really kind of moving this from my hips so that it's nice and easy and not difficult in my body while I'm doing it, because if it feels good in my body, it'll probably feel good for him. So that is effleurage. That's our first action. So as you're working with your loved one here, you can do maybe five to 10 strokes um, in each area. Michael likes more, so you can <laughs> definitely go longer with that if you'd like. It should be a very just relaxing, soothing um, part of the massage. And to recap it, basically, um, effleurage just helps to warm up the muscle tissue so that he's ready for a little bit deeper work when we get into doing our next actions, which are really specific um, actions to help release specific muscles. So again, this is sort of your intro, just kind of getting in touch with their body and starting to warm things up so that they're ready for deeper work. Again, just have fun with it. There's no right or wrong on this, just warming up the area. The next technique I'll show you is called stripping. And for that, you need to create what's called chisel hands. And basically, your hands are just like a tool, like a chisel. So you cross your index fingers. You have your four fingers across like so. And then you just rest that right below his collarbone. The point of um, stripping is that we're accessing like areas where the muscle attaches to bone and lengthening the muscle so that there's more space um, for breath underneath those muscles. If the muscle's tight, it's gonna clamp down around the rib cage. Freeing up the muscles around the rib cage is again what we're after. So I take my hands just to his collarbone, I feel the bone of his collarbone, I go right below it, and then I'm just gonna sink down and in a little bit, just till I feel a little bit of resistance from the muscle. And then for this, I'm just doing small strokes, down away from the collarbone, Come back to the collarbone again, go down and away from the collarbone. And you can do this all the way through across the collarbone towards the outer part of the collarbone. Right. So again, that's just taking it right at the collarbone. I've got my four fingers. I'm gauging the tissue, pressing forward away from the collarbone. Right. Show that on this side as well. Engage the tissue right at the collarbone. Draw it into the tissue, pressing it away from the collarbone. Just little circles. You engage, draw a circle, come back to the collarbone, engage, draw a circle. This same technique you can use back at the chest again. So you remember this stroke we did was effleurage, right? Where we were working this way that same line that you're traveling, you can do your chisel hands. So again, you place your four fingers, index fingers crossed, 
you just feel the tissue under your hands. You're just gonna let your hands sink down and in. And then slowly, it's like you're just pushing that tissue away from the center of the chest towards the head of the shoulder. So again, my line is from the center of the chest out to where the um, chest muscle actually attaches, which is way out here, actually. Some of it attaches way up on your upper arm. We don't think of that as chest muscle, but it is up there. So again, I'm engaging, shifting my weight forward as I start to push through the tissue towards the outer shoulder. So a good three or four strokes with that. You can go to different parts of the chest. You can go up a little bit higher to do that. Again, this is all going to feel good, so don't be tentative about it. They'll tell you, just be in communication. If something doesn't feel good, they'll let you know. And we're working across the chest that way. And we'll take that other side. Come to the center of the chest. Get your chisel hands. Engage the tissue. Shift your weight forward. You're pushing the tissue towards the shoulder. I'm effectively taking that chest muscle and lengthening from one end to the other, from where that chest muscle attaches to the rib cage, here at the center, out to its insertion point, which is the end point of the muscle out at the shoulder. So that is our chisel hands. And between these, if you want to throw in a couple effleurages, they'll love that too. So again, in um, summary, chisel hands, stripping, is about just engaging the beginning of the muscle and lengthening and releasing all these little attachments, places where the chest muscle um, meets the bone. So that's our intention with this work, is to kind of free up some of that muscle tissue where it meets bone and also create length, like when we were doing this stroke, lengthening, 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 opening that chest muscle. And that's our stripping. Passive muscle release is basically me moving Michael through some um, movement, which actually feels good because um, you're able to stretch and open chest muscles without actually having to use your own muscles to create it, like if you were lifting your own arm or taking your own arm back. Okay, So basically what I'm doing is supporting Michael from the wrist. Not at the hand because that's going to feel like it's stretching his wrist, but here at his wrist. So I'm supporting him at the wrist. And then I'm just, and you may initially find there's some resistance to them um, allowing you to move their arm, but just give it a little um, rock and shake. And if there is some resistance, that's fine. If you need to support them a little more from the elbow, if they need more support, again, you just communicate with the person you're working with and just free form kind of movement. We're just free forming movement with the shoulder. And then we can get to some nice stretches here by taking a hold of the wrist again, not the hand, but the wrist, and stretching directly out to the side, which is going to give them a nice stretch across the chest. You can take it a little bit to the floor. Again, I recommend just communicating with the person that you're working with so that you're not taking them into any area of discomfort. How are you doing, Michael, with that? And then when you bring it back up, you bend the elbow, and then we're just going to take it right up towards the ceiling. Again, you can see I'm holding the wrist, not the hand. I'm drawing up. That's going to give him a stretch even into the back here. Then you just take a few breaths there with them. Let them breathe a few moments into that. Maybe four or five breaths. Then I slowly come in and I slowly come out. You notice I'm not yanking his arm around. Just nice slow movement. Now I'm taking one foot, stepping it forward, and then leaning forward, taking his arm back. This one usually feels particularly good. It's a stretch across the chest. Yep. And give him a few moments to breathe there. And then slowly 
I bring the arm back. You can give it a little shake again and let the arm release. I'll show that on the other side too so you can see it again. So the biggest thing is just making sure you feel like you're really supporting your loved one here. So again, by the wrist is gonna be the best place to do so. If that feels like there's a lot of resistance, again, you could support them by the elbow too. So again, I could just take him through a little bit of movement here. It's kind of impromptu, free form movement. Again, there's no right or wrong on this. Just anything you think of here. Creating, think fluid, you know, like the ocean. And then we did a little bit of rocking. And then facing towards the head of the table, I have a hold of the wrist and I'm taking a step out to the side to open the chest. Again, a couple of breaths there. I slowly let the elbow bend. I come back in. I take one foot forward and I go straight up to the ceiling, just supporting at the wrist. So you notice I came slowly into that. I don't want to go straight overhead yet. I just want to slowly let the arm come back to neutral position. So I'm coming kind of neutral in the shoulder where it's relaxed so that when I step back, it doesn't feel weird in his shoulder. Again, just communicate with them. It might take you a few times to get used to these techniques, but um, after a few times, you'll probably find it feels more comfortable in your body and it's all about just creating some communication with you and the person you're working with. You're all here for the same purpose, so. And then again, we bring it back, give a little rock, and then back to the hand to the side. So again, the purpose of that passive release work is so um, that you can passively allow them to stretch chest muscle and feel all sorts of great range of motion, which um, your client might not be able to fully experience on their own, depending on the strength of their muscles at this point. So um, it's a nice way of them getting some range of motion and openness again in the chest muscle. Breaking the ribs, what we're looking for is the intercostal muscles. Now when we were talking about breathing, we mentioned that there's muscles between your ribs called your intercostal muscles, which help with the breathing. So what I'm creating is my hand almost like a rake. So you see I'm curving my fingers here a little bit. And then what I'm looking for is those bones of his ribs and trying to fit my fingers between the bones. So if your um, ribs are like this, you're trying to place your fingers between the bones of the rib cage. You'll notice I'm at an angle pointing towards the shoulder. That's because the um, ribs actually go in that same direction as my hand. So that when I fit my hand down and in there, I can feel the space between the ribs and then I grab a hold of it and start to draw back. This is the raking. And then you can switch hands. Take the other hand in there, feel those ribs. You're fitting your fingers between the groove of the ribs. This is getting into intercostal muscle. So I'm just one hand over the other. Again, I'm trying to shift from my hips. When this ship hip shifts forward, I'm catching a hold of the rib cage, drawing back with the hip and the shoulder, and then switching. So this is raking the ribs. You can do this and kind of combine it if you want. If you want to get playful with it, combine the rib raking with opening the shoulder back, right? Again, Take these techniques, play with it. You might discover some other things that you like that work for you. The purpose of raking the ribs, again, is to open the space between the ribs to allow for better breathing as we release those little intercostal muscles.